The tomato harvest is finally coming on and I have enough tomatoes to make my favorite and easiest way of a nice thick tomato sauce because nobody likes a water, watery thin sauce. But I'm also gonna be sharing with you my favorite methods so that I am doing the least amount of hands on time or the least amount of work that you can get away with and still have a lovely home canned tomato sauce. So the number one way to have a nice thick sauce is to start with a paste tomato. I have a variety in here of both San Marzano Lungos as well as Amish paste tomatoes. Roma are another option, but you wanna go with this pear-shaped type Roma tomato because they have less water, more flesh, and the less water you have in the tomato means the least amount of time that you have to do simmering in order to get that nice, thick sauce. I also feel like the paste tomatoes give a wonderful flavor, but Whenever you are canning your sauce, you have to remove the skins. The skins harbor a higher bacteria load and all of our tested methods when we're canning already have the addition of acid because tomatoes are borderline. Despite whatever variety they may be, there's a misconception or a myth that floats around that if it's a certain type of heirloom tomato that it's acidic, not true. We need to be adding acid whenever we're canning and the amount of acid and the processing times that we have are based upon the skins removed. If you leave the skins on, you have a higher bacteria load and therefore the tested times that we have don't ensure that you have a safe product. So we need to get these skins removed. Now you may be really clean in the kitchen. I am not. And my secret is to wear something red whenever you are canning tomato products or white, one, you won't see the red on red, and if it's white, at least I can bleach it out to remove any stains if need be. So for the first method that we're gonna be doing when we've got a bunch of fresh tomatoes that are coming on, I prefer to roast these in the oven just long enough so that the skins easily separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this onto a high boil, let that begin heating up, and then we are going to prep these guys. So what we wanna do is we are going to core them. And the great thing about using a paste tomato is these guys do not have the large core or a huge amount of seeds like you will find. See, little tiny core, barely anything there. We'll get a bowl here and toss those into. Um, hardly anything in there. You always want to make sure that you are using diseased free tomatoes whenever we are canning. So just going to go ahead and open those up. And there's just this little tiny bit in the middle here that has the seed sack and a little bit more of the core. So it's really simple. There we go. Seeds are out and we're gonna place that cut side down. Same thing with this other half. So you can see you're just running your thumb basically through there really fast and easy. We're gonna get these trays filled up. All right, we've got our first trays done. So we wanna put these into our oven. I'm gonna set the timer for five minutes. Our goal is to just have them in there long enough for the skins to start to shrivel because then they will easily pull off. So while that first batch is going, we're gonna get started on our second batch of trays here and our tomatoes. Now, in the past, I've also got a written blog post that has the printable directions and recipes as far as how much acid per jar and processing times for you. So that is in the video description. You can click on over to that link. But I have in the past where I have just put the tomatoes, which is kind of the traditional way that you'll see in a lot of canning books where you will put your tomatoes um, into a pot over heat and you'll mash them up in a thin layer and then you take them off and then you put them through a food mill or a sieve or something like that in order to separate out the skins and the seeds. I just find this to be, and I have a um, sieve and a food mill, but I have just found over the years personally, this is the way that I have gravitated and kept doing the tomatoes. And it's less of transferring um, the hot liquid when it's from a hot pot. Yes, these are hot oven trays, but I don't know, I just find it easier, but there is one other thing that you can do that I wanna show you, and that is what I will do if I don't have a large amount of tomatoes that are ripe yet, 
or if you really are in a spot where you do not want to heat up or turn on the oven, but you are gonna be simmering your sauce no matter what. If you're using a paste tomatoes, you're gonna be simmering it less. So you'll still be heating up that way in the kitchen, but you may decide to do that outside. And that is to freeze your tomatoes ahead of time. So here, I've got a couple of gallon bags. This was the first batch of tomatoes that I had come on, and you can see that there was not nearly enough to bother with doing here, so I just tossed them as they came on right here into the bags until the majority came on. Now these are still thawing. I've got some ice chunks uh, here actually in the center, but as these thaw, you can see this is wrinkly here, and as they thaw, then the skins will just pull right off very, very easily, just as if you had blanched them. Um, I don't do this with all of my tomatoes simply because when they're all on, I don't have that much freezer space. So this one is all peeled and ready to go uh, with the rest when I pull them out of the oven, and those ones are peeled too. Okay, so our timer just went off, so we are going to take a peek and see if these guys are ready at the five minute mark get a hot pad. Oh yeah. So this one is on the top and you can see I've got split skins and I've also got wrinkly skin. So we just need to set this down um, so that until these are cool enough to handle and then they are going to be ready to go. So these have been about just five minutes. We basically just want them cool enough that they're not going to burn our fingers as we are pulling off our tomato skin. So they're still a little bit hot and steamy, but I can handle these without gloves, so not a big issue. Now, you can just throw away the tomato skins, but you also can put them into a bowl and save them, and you can either dehydrate them or freeze dry them, and then you will have a tomato skin powder that you can add a little bit of water to, or you can just add it to soups and stews as a thickener or an easy way to create tomato paste. Um, that is a safe way to preserve and put these skins to you. So kind of up to you there. Now, as I go through here, I like to just throw my tomatoes out. They've already been uh, cored, <laughs> seeds removed, and now the skins removed. And then I puree them up and then I put them in the pot to simmer. Now, tomato sauce, I don't ever make pizza sauce or spaghetti sauce that has other added stuff in it, I do all of my tomatoes, with the exception of salsa, into a basic tomato sauce. And the reason for that is because, oh, next batch. Oh, let's see, there you go, a couple more minutes, not quite yet. But the reason for that is because I have found that one, it's just easier for me to do that, and then when I wanna make pizza, I just pull out the tomato sauce, simmer some onions and garlic, and add a little bit of fresh herbs or dried herbs, depending upon the time of year, right directly into the sauce along with olive oil. Uh, you can't can with oil in it. And I've also discovered that I feel like the flavor profile, if I'm using my fresh onions and garlic, I just think that the flavor profile is much more pronounced and is better. If you've ever put herbs into something that you're cooking, especially in a, like a slow cooker, they really lose their flavor, which is why you should only put them in right at the end. And so I don't find it worth the extra work to do that when I'm making up sauce. I prefer just to use it all fresh at that time. And then if I really need a tomato paste, I can just let it sit and uh, simmer on the stove and thicken up just that small jar uh, rather than doing a whole batch of tomato paste or a specific sauce recipe. Okay, so we now have one tray in here, so I'm going to blend this up and get an approximate quantity. Right at about four cups. Now, this won't be the amount of finished sauce because we're going to thicken this up, but I am gonna put it in the pot over medium heat to begin getting that ready to a simmer so we can thicken it and pull my next batch out. So while my very last tray of roasted tomatoes there is cooling off to handle, here are the frozen and then thawed ones. So I am going to cut the stem off of that one, slip off the skin. Oh, I didn't get it all the way through. 
And then you're gonna wanna open this up to the center. Here you can see the core and our seed packet. So we're gonna take that out and put that in there. So we just got the last of the tomatoes in here and we're gonna let this simmer to make sure everything is heated all the way through and we'll let it reduce a little bit. But you guys, it is already so thick that it's, look at this. Look at how thick that is. It really needs very little time to reduce because it's already super thick, which is one of my absolute favorite things. So while this is simmering and reducing just a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and get our canner ready. Now you actually have two options when it comes to how you choose to process your tomato sauce. So our sauce has simmered and reduced by about an inch in the pot and it is now time to fill our jars. Now you have two methods that you can safely process and can tomato sauce. You can do it in a water bath canner or you can do it in your pressure canner. I like to do it in the pressure canner because I don't have to process it for as long and I actually don't even have a water bath canner anymore. I just use my steam canner, but because if you're water bath canning tomato sauce, it is a longer processing time and it goes over 30 minutes and a steam canner can only be used for water bath recipes that are 30 minutes or less simply because there's not enough volume of water for it to create steam and go beyond 30 minutes. So I'm going to be pressure canning these jars instead. Now, regardless if you are pressure canning, this is something that a lot of people uh, miss or don't necessarily realize. The processing times for pressure canning tomato sauce are with added acid. So if you're following any of the manuals that have recipes that come with your pressure canner or from any of our trusted sources like the ball book or if you're in my canning course, um, ball, uh, National Center of Home Food Preservation, etc., you will see that tomato sauce, even with pressure canned, that time is with the added acid to the jar. The only time that you can can tomato without adding any acid with a pressure canner is when you're doing soup, and that processing time is usually like 60 to 75 minutes, whereas when we're pressure canning our sauce with our added acid, we're only doing it for 15 minutes based upon your altitude. Now, for specifics on your altitude and processing time, processing time, water bath, and pressure canner is different, go to that blog post that has the printable recipe card um, and grab that. Now, when it comes to your acid choices, there's actually three options. The first is to use citric acid, which is a white small amount of powder. It's a specific amount per jar. Or bottled lemon juice from concentrate. It needs to be from concentrate and it needs to be bottled because the acidity levels of lemons vary when they're fresh based upon lots of different factors. Bottled lemon juice from concentrate is a specific acidity so that when we're, uh, the recipe's times have been calculated, it's based upon the consistency and the acidity in the bottled lemon juice. So it needs to go into each jar, your specific amount. You can also use vinegar, but you have to use a lot of vinegar. It needs to be 5% vinegar. And I choose not to use the vinegar because you have to use enough for it to be acidic enough that you can have a little bit of an aftertaste of that coming. You don't taste the lemon juice and you don't taste the citric acid. Um, I'm gonna be using lemon juice today. Now, another mistake I see people make when they are filling their jars, these have just come out of hot soapy water and been rinsed in really hot water. They need to be sitting on a towel so that when I put this simmering, boiling hot tomato sauce into the jar, that I, it's not in contact with a cold counter because their jars can crack. You can have thermal shock, thermal shock. Also, because my lemon juice has been in the fridge, I always put a little amount, one ladle full of the tomato sauce in the jar, and then I'm going to fill the jar with the proper amount of lemon juice. If you put cold lemon juice in a jar that's been washed in really hot soapy water, I've had them crack. So, lesson learned. So, this is for a quart jar. We're gonna be doing two tablespoons per jar of bottled lemon juice. And then I'm gonna be doing a teaspoon of salt. And you can absolutely use, whoops, that's a little bit of a, too much of a teaspoon. There we go. I didn't realize I had my little pour open quite so much. You can use canning salt. You can also use Redmond's Real Salt. You just wanna make sure that you are using salt that doesn't have iodine in it or anti-caking agents. Now we're going to continue filling this jar. 
move it up a little bit so you can see a little bit on better camera angle there, um, with the rest of our tomato sauce. You can see how nice and thick that is. Now your head space is actually going to change if you are doing a water bath or if you're pressure canning this. I'm pressure canning this, so I'm going to be using the head space for a pressure canner, which is one inch. Like I said, go and grab that recipe card if you're doing water bath because you do have a different head space for water bath versus pressure canning. A lot of people don't realize that but you do. So we want this to be a one inch head space. So we're gonna measure it, not quite there. Add a little bit more. And check, okay, right at one inch head space. This is a thick sauce. So you still wanna go through, remove any type of air bubbles that may be present. And then we're gonna recheck our head space. And I'm right on. Wipe our rim clean. And you only wanna put this down to fingertip tight. And then you wanna put this into the preheated pressure canner. You don't wanna fill all of the jars and leave them sitting there and allow them to cool down. This is a hot pack, so as soon as this jar is filled, it's gonna go directly into the canner. So I just had enough for a pint jar here. Three quarts and one pint which the great news about pressure canning your tomato sauce is it's the actually same processing time for both pints and quarts. That's usually not the case, but it is for this. So we are gonna go ahead and get these processed. And then I'm gonna show you a tip to help reduce siphoning, which is when you have the product coming out of the jar. So you've had it at the headspace when it went in, and then when you're done canning, you'll notice that there's a bunch of liquid loss. That's called siphoning, very common with syrups, fruits, and sauces. So I've got a tip that will help you reduce that. So you can probably hear it, but we just let this vent for 10 minutes with steam coming out in a steady stream. Try to say that three times fast which means we are now ready to put on our pounds of pressure. So if you are a thousand feet above sea level or lower, you are going to be at 10 pounds of pressure. And as soon as that comes up to pressure and starts jiggling, we'll start, start our timer, which will be for 15 minutes. We got that jiggle. That means we are at our pounds of pressure. So we'll start our timer. Okay. Two minutes is up, I'm gonna turn that timer off. And then I still recommend using hot pads because it's still hot. So you're gonna take your lid off the same way you put it on, doing opposite or opposing wing nuts at the same time. And then you always want to take this off and use it as a shield to block any of this hot steam that's coming out. And then this is where people have siphoning happen is they try to take the jars out much too soon. So you want to set your timer when they're coming out of a pressure canner for 10 minutes with the lid off before we remove them. Okay, now our 10 minutes is up and now we are going to be taking out our jars. Always, always make sure, especially at this point, that you have got a towel and it is at least doubled over before you set your hot jars that are coming out of this pressure canner onto the countertop. For more tips on reducing siphoning, and if you do have siphoning happening, when is it still safe and when is it not safe to store the jars, make sure that you check out this podcast and blog post episode.